Good evening, I'm Keisha Betts with a CTV News update. Lawmakers in Annapolis were lockstep today as the state and House unanimously voted to pause the state's gas tax. Marylanders currently pay 36 cents a gallon in state taxes. The measure, which would be in effect for 30 days, would eliminate the requirement that service station owners remit the gas levy to the comptroller's office. The hope is that the station owners pass along the savings to consumers, although lawmakers say they cannot mandate it. Governor Hogan has indicated he'll sign the legislation, the average cost of a gallon of gas is $4.20. Meantime, two 13-year-olds have been missing since last Monday, and tonight their families asked for your help. Alea Robinson and Janiah Clayton Bowman were last seen leaving Drew Freeman Middle School around 3 p.m. on March 7th. Family members say they were walking towards the Ashton Apartments. If you have any information on their whereabouts, you're asked to call police. You can also visit the Black and Missing Foundation's website for more details about the girls. With the COVID metrics declining, the Prince George's County Health Department is closing some vaccination and testing sites on a staggered scale. The testing site at Doctors Community Hospital will close after today. Testing at the Temple Hills Community Center shuts down March 25th, and the Wayne K. Curry Sports and Learning Complex Mass Vaccination Clinic is scheduled to close on April 8th. The Health Department says testing and vaccinations are, steadily, are still readily available at locations countywide. For the location of these sites, visit the link at the bottom of your screen. Well, here are the latest COVID-19 numbers for our area. Of the 376 new COVID cases identified by the Maryland Health Department, just 28 are in Prince George's. The county's positivity rate is at 1.31 percent. Three Marylanders have died of COVID since yesterday. 224 people remain hospitalized. Hyattsville has a special mayoral election coming up. This comes after the former mayor Kevin Ward tragically took his own life in January. The election will take place on June 7th. The new mayor will have will excuse me. The new mayor will have a short term that ends in 2023. City officials say you must be over 18 years old and a city resident to run for mayor. We're looking for somebody who's energized about helping the residents of the city of Hyattsville, um, who's familiar with the different issues facing residents of Hyattsville. Um, but, you know, as an election administrator, it's not up to me. It's up to the voters and really, you know, what they're looking for in their mayor. The candidate registration opens on Monday. It closes on April 8th. For more details, visit the website on your screen. You're watching CTV News. I'm Keisha Butts. Coming up, a new food program for the Laurel community. That story after the break. During high school, I hung with the wrong crowd and I never graduated. I helped Santiago in many different ways, like all fathers do, because he always wanted to go to college. I felt a little embarrassed to come back to school, but eventually once I came here, I knew that it's for a bigger goal. He was very dedicated, hardworking. He connected with his teachers. He connected with other students. That was one of the key reasons why he was able to keep forging ahead. It was amazing to see him graduate. This was one thing that meant so much to him, and of course, it meant so much to us too. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed. That support is everything. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back. Prince George's police announced an arrest in a 1989 cold case homicide. The suspect is 64 year old James Cole. He's charged with the murder and sexual assault of 27 year old county resident Cynthia Rogers. Her body was discovered in a wooded area in Forestville earlier this year. Cold case detectives retested DNA evidence, which they say points to Cole. Authorities didn't have to go far to find Cole. He's currently behind bars serving a life sentence for an unrelated rape conviction. Meantime, it took two years, but a longtime Laurel Church will finally begin its newest food giveaway program this weekend. St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Laurel will open the doors to its Little Chapel Food Pantry this Sunday, March 20th. The pantry is located in a white chapel just behind the church. The church just recently entered a partnership with the Capital Area Food Bank, which allows organizers to purchase food at a reduced price. We can support this month at least 37 families 
Um, we have extra in case other people come, um, but we have pre-bagged food for uh, 37 families. We plan on having a swap table, so if somebody has something that they didn't want or if there's somebody, you know, they, we can exchange. Um, but this is kind of our, this is the first time we're just kind of getting our feet wet. And we are just excited that this building is being used to support the community because it's been vacant since just before the pandemic. The Little Chapel Food Pantry will be open every third Sunday from 9 a.m. until noon. Organizers say the food will be available to anyone regardless of where they live. The mayor of Bowie announces more than 50 major endorsements today in his bid to be Maryland's next comptroller. Tim Adams has picked up support from Democrats across the state. They include the former mayor of Baltimore, Jack Young, and the city council president, Nick Mosby. Locally, some of his backers include state's attorney Aisha Brave Boy, council Chairman Calvin Hawkins and Council Member Jolene Ivey. Adams is facing off against Delegate Brooke Learman in the Comptroller's race. A bill that would help fund more electric school buses across the state is expected to make it to the House floor this week. Its sponsor, Delegate David Fraser Hidalgo, says the measure could have huge environmental benefits, but he says the most important change would be to children's health. The um, pollution content inside of a school bus can be over two and a half times greater than outside of a school bus. So really, when we put our kids on school buses, like we've been doing for uh, you know, 100 years now, we don't even realize it, but we're actually poisoning our kids. Um, and so that will uh, that should lead to a decrease in asthmatic and bronchial related issues and emergency room visits. Every, every year, we spend about $27 billion on asthmatic and bronchial related issues um, for, for people. Fraser Hidalgo says the measure would also allow for a partnership between the local electric companies and school systems. He says while the buses sit idle in the summer, Pepco and BGE can drain the batteries and feed the electricity back into the grid, helping power the system during peak times on hot days. Bring out the beer and the shamrocks because it's finally St. Patrick's Day. If you're looking for a fun place to celebrate with food and, of course, drinks, we'll head on over to Newsback's restaurant and bar in Laurel. This year, the establishment will have a lot of St. Patty's Day themed specials on the menu, like an Irish mimosa. Bartender Abby Rhodes says she expects a big turnout later this evening. Well, obviously we were shut down for 2020 2021 we didn't have many specials going back on because we were you know just picking back up on business and things like that so this is one of the first years since 2020 that we've been able to do a lot of um, specials and things like that so we're really excited and hopefully we get bigger turnout than the last two years we are a very big family here so these type of um, celebrations give all of us the regulars of this area and area in Laurel a place to come to celebrate and spend time together. You know, we're all friends and family here. Remember, if you plan to drink, don't forget to set up a sober ride home and still to come. The Washington Commanders introduce their new quarterback. We'll meet Carson Wentz right after the break. Stay with us. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. Jessica has been through a lot in her life from early childhood. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She came in looking to complete her diploma. As she had a family she had to take care of. Anytime she needed help, we provided her help. She realized that we were here for her. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. My graduation, it was something I will never forget. I couldn't explain the emotion I was feeling because people like you and me sometimes may have doubts in herself, but I feel that everything's possible. Jessica's future is brighter than ever. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Thank you for staying with us. Two new bills are pending that could help election officials manage mail-in ballots. The legislation is the result of ongoing redistricting litigation that has caused uncertainty and delays. The measures would allow for the pre-processing of mail-in ballots and provide voters a chance to fix issues with their cast ballots to prevent rejection. The primary election was originally scheduled for June 28th, but the Maryland Court of Appeals rescheduled it for July 19th. 
Police have released the identity of a pedestrian who was struck by two vehicles in Forestville on Tuesday. Investigators say 64 year old Jeanette Diggs of Forestville was struck and killed by two vehicles as she crossed the 3300 block of Walters Lane. Neither motorist stayed on the scene. Investigators say one of the striking vehicles may be a black sedan. Anyone with information is asked to contact police. The U.S. Postal Inspection Service is offering a reward of up to $50,000 for information leading to an arrest in the robbery of a U.S. letter carrier. Officials say the incident happened in New Carrollton at the Hilltop Apartments on March 8th. They say the suspects shown here are in their late teens or early 20s and they're about six feet tall. If you have any information, you're urged to call the number on your screen. The world's largest environmental film festival starts today in the nation's capital. The festival, which is celebrating its 30th anniversary, highlights climate and environmental issues. The opening night selection this evening is a film called Fire of Love. It follows a volcanologist couple as they, as they travel across the planet chasing volcanic eruptions while documenting their discoveries. Filmmakers and dozens of experts will hold public discussions about their features throughout the festival. We'll have filmmakers participating from around the world, Academy Award winners um, and nominees like uh, Luis Ahoyos, of course, won for the, the famous environmental film, The Cove. He's done Racing Extinction since. Um, so he'll be on our panel about um, uh, impact and just sort of how um, environmental film has changed over the past 30 years, which it really has, of course, as one could easily understand. We also have a film called We Feed People, which is about Jose Andres and his uh, The World Central Kitchen. Um, he's, you know, during a lot of recent humanitarian crises, um, Jose Andres has sort of reached a, an international profile. Of course, his, his main home base is here in Washington, D.C., so we're very excited to, to have a film featuring him and about him. It is directed by Ron Howard, which is very exciting, so that will be the, the closing um, night presentation. Tomorrow night, a special tribute to Jane Goodall will be featured. All the films are virtual this year and most are free to watch. For more information on the Environmental Film Festival, go to DCEFF.org. Sports news, there's a new quarterback in town. The Washington Commanders introduced their new quarterback this morning. He's Carson Wentz, formerly with the Philadelphia Eagles and Indianapolis Colts. After being traded twice in two years, Wentz has a new home with the Commanders. While the trade to Washington was controversial, Wentz called it surprising. Dressed in burgundy and gold, he spoke to local media this morning. I'm definitely surprised. Um, you know, anytime you're in a, in a new place, you want it to work out, you know, you want to, you want to be there. You want to do the best you can for that team, that organization, that fan base. And uh, God willing, it works out for a long time. It didn't, you know, it didn't. And uh, God changed our plans and here we are and, and we're excited for it. Um, and I, I just think for me, I just come in and earn the respect of the, the guys in the locker room, the coaches, the fans. Uh, I know it's not going to just be handed, handed to me. I, I look forward to earning that respect and uh, hopefully, you know, being part of something special. Wins has a $28 million salary for the 2022 season. Well, let's get a quick check on our three day weather forecast tonight. Cloudy with a chance of rain and a low around 45. Friday, partly cloudy with a high near 73. Saturday, cloudy with thunderstorms possible in the morning and a high near 76. Sunday, partly sunny with a high near 60. And that wraps up our CTV News update. I'm Keisha Butts. Have a good night.